Welcome back everyone. Uh, let's talk some more about pool stuff today. Uh, you know, I take my pool down and put it up every year, uh, which allows me to do a couple of things. Number one, I don't have to deal with the water um, over the winter months, but number two, it allows me to make any changes to my foundation. And I often get a lot of questions when people come over in the pool asking why uh, my pool is so squishy and like soft. Um, and usually the question is, how much sand do you have underneath there? Do not use sand. If you are watching videos um, right now on YouTube, try to figure out the best way to set up your foundation. Any of them that just say use sand, don't do that. Um, I don't recommend it at all. Uh, so I do use a little bit of sand. I'm not gonna say don't use any, uh, but just a pure sand foundation is a really bad idea for these above ground pools. And I'll tell you why in just a minute. Um, so let me kind of run you through the, my setup, just give you a quick overview. Um, I do have more compacted earth here, um, which I do put a little bit of sand on top, uh, but then I put on top of that, some of that insulation foam board. Um, understand that uh, there's a lot of videos out there that you can watch. This is just one of the many, but, uh, I wanna give you a few tips and tricks on those. Number one, you wanna make sure that you're using the right foam and I'll show you what that looks like in just a moment. Uh, you don't wanna use the wrong stuff cause it will just completely disintegrate underneath your pool. Uh, so let's get started. First, um, as you can see right here behind me, I already have a pretty good foundation laid uh, to give you just an example of what I've had to do personally uh, because my uh, home slopes away from, uh, or rather the grade you want to use technical terms basically there's a slope in the yard so that water runs away from the house right most homes are going to have this issue um, if you don't awesome you you win here what i've had to do is on the high side take dirt out and on the low side put dirt down and so what i've had to do is build a small retaining wall as you can see behind me here um, in order to make sure that that dirt uh, stays in place um, i have many of those uh, retaining walls staked so they don't move because there's a ton of pressure on top of this soil. We'll talk about that and how that manages with sand in just a moment, okay? But let me give you a quick rundown of what I do uh, to ensure that my foundation is as level as it can be and is compacted and flat uh, before I put on my foam, okay? My first step is that I do tend to rake everything up just to kind of break apart uh, the top part of the soil rake up any sticks or leaves that might be in the way. Uh, this also kind of gives me a little bit of free dirt um, on top so that if I need to move it around to any low spots, I can do that um, if there's any leveling after the fact. Uh, you know, usually we get a lot of rainfall where I'm located here in Texas, and sometimes that can lead to some erosion. And so this allows me to fix any of those low spots or any areas of ground that's maybe just compacted uh, in the previous year maybe due to uh, just the, the weight of the pool being in that area, okay? So I rake everything out. Sometimes I may need to add a little bit of soil to the top. Um, I might add a little bit of topsoil first and then maybe add some uh, uh, sand. Uh, right now, I've, I've got everything compacted so much that if I add anything, it's gonna be a little bit of sand. So after I rake it, um, I do a couple of things to make sure that it is level. Um, I take my little handy dandy uh, wooden rake and I, don't, I guess it's not even a rake, I don't know what this thing is, but just to kind of push soil around, this allows me to kind of look and see any low spots. Uh, you can do this with just a two by four, uh, which I also use. Um, that two by four uh, allows me to kind of see low and high spots just as I move it around. But I'm also gonna use that two by four at the end uh, to make sure that after I've moved my soil around that I still have maintained a level environment. It's extremely important at this stage to make sure that your foundation is as level as possible. There is a tolerance zone on these uh, pools, which is perfectly fine, and that's awesome, uh, but you still wanna be, the, be as level as possible, uh, particularly whenever you are putting in the feet. Um, the next thing that I do is I then have uh, this foam. And so this foam that I've gotten, I just went to Home Depot um, or Lowe's or wherever, uh, sometimes it's pink, sometimes it's blue, depending on the company. What you don't want is the foil lined foam board. Uh, that insulation just compacts. Uh, this is uh, XPS, I believe is the correct uh, for formula for this. The XPS foam, extended polystyrene, I believe. And this foam 
um, has a, uh, it's got a backing to it. You can leave it on. I usually do. Uh, if you want to take it off, that's fine. But simply all you do is you, uh, you tape all these sheets together um, to fit into your location. Now, if you've noticed what I have on mine, I've already got the footholes cut out because I did this last year. Uh, what I recommend is when you cut this, uh, first you want to cut it much larger than the footprint of your swimming pool, right? So your foundation wants to be uh, or needs to be maybe a foot wider uh, than your pool. You bring down your foam uh, that's uh, all taped together. You then put that on there, cut that, that size. Um, so then when you put your pool on, then you can really cut it to the exact size that you're going to need for that. Uh, the tape that I used on this was the Outdoor Heavy Duty Ultra Gorilla Tape uh, or duct tape. Any of those will work. Um, and then once you put that out on your foundation, uh, you want to go through and as you're setting up your pool, putting your, placing your blocks. Uh, the nice thing about this uh, foam and the blocks that I have is that the top of the blocks are just slightly above the foam um, and that allows for as even as possible uh, for the bottom of that leg of the each uh, you know sides of the pool to be flat and flush with kind of ground level. Depending on your block you may have to dig that out a little bit um, because you don't want to set this directly on the phone. What I mean by that is the legs of your pool you do not want to just set on top of the foam. Uh, that much pressure and that much small of an area will cause some problems and those legs will sink down. So I recommend uh, once you have your pool kind of up and set, uh, maybe put some water in it, then you can go around and cut the sections out where your legs are going to be, place your stone, and again, try to get that leg as flush as you can with the bottom of your pool. Uh, that way that you're ensuring that there isn't any excess stress um, on that pool leg. So let's talk about sand for a moment. You have to understand sand, uh, which is a very large soil particle size. Yeah, water runs through it very quickly, that's great, but it does not hold its shape very well and it's very difficult to compact it without other sediment in there. Uh, consider how many gallons your pool is and then multiply that times eight, which is the weight of a gallon of water. So that's how much weight is actually pressing down on that sand if you only do sand. Whenever you have that much pressure, it's still not going to compact that soil, which is, which is mind-blowing that sand has that quality. And so the problem with sand is whenever you get heavy rainfall, you can actually get a lot of erosion out from underneath your pool, even though that sand is being compacted by that pool. Um, it's not a great substrate to put your legs on uh, because, again, it's going to shift and move way too much. Having a little bit on top here is not that big of a deal. Um, because it's already compacted underneath. If you're just trying to get a little bit of a level, you're actually pretty good to go with sand. Okay. All right, everyone. I hope that that uh, quick discussion uh, helped you kind of figure out maybe the route that you want to go. Um, I'm very pleased with the foam underneath uh, the pool. Uh, it's actually very flat and smooth after you take the time to tape it down. Um, once you set the pool on it and it compresses a little bit, um, it's actually pretty awesome. You get a little bit of give to it. It feels great on the feet. Um, and it does protect your pool a little bit from anything that's underneath like roots. Well, everyone, thanks again for listening um, to me rant and rave and talk about weird stuff like pool foundations. But um, I appreciate it. If you have any tips or tricks that you would like to share, please leave them below in the comments. Um, if you're like me, I watch multiple videos and learn so many things here on YouTube. Um, it'd be great to share that with our community, particularly those of us that are looking to kind of do some work on our pools um, and that would definitely help us out uh, to try to figure out well, what can we do and maybe there's a video in the future that I can make about it. All right, thanks again everyone. Catch you next time.